Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart and the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. Here at Washington Street, we are glad to gather in this virtual platform to worship God and to welcome you into the presence of our Lord. It is good to be together always, and we are so looking forward to being together on May 2nd when we gather for our first in-person indoor worship experience at 11 o'clock in our sanctuary. We are asking that you pre-register for this service. This will allow us to make sure we have plenty of room for everybody and to plan and for that time when we need to add a second service on Sunday morning. I also want to remind you that we will continue during this transition period, our virtual worship experiences and our outdoor worship experiences, because we understand that some of us are ready to be in person while some of us are a little less ready. But we invite you to continue to worship either on this platform at our outdoor services and then beginning on May 2nd at our indoor in-person worship experiences at 11 o'clock in our sanctuary. I'm so glad that you have chosen to be a part of our church family here today. And I celebrate with the Hall family the baptism of Vivian James Hall. She was baptized last Sunday, and you will see the video of that baptism in our service this morning. And I hope that you will take time to mark this in their life with a card or a note to the Hall family. I want to express my deep appreciation to our Sunday dinner team who is gathering right now to prepare for our Sunday brunch on the grounds. What a great ministry we are providing to our community. As we gather this time, we will be meeting from 11 to 1, serving a great and wonderful brunch by Deneen the Coffee Queen, and also offering COVID-19 shots to our community. In addition, there will be a van here to uh, test for HIV positive and also for hepatitis C. In this way, we continue the ministry of Christ, offering food, healing, and hope to the world. Let us worship the Lord. Join me in today's opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. 
Give us also the joys of life in your service and bring us at last to full joy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now if you would join me in the affirmation of faith as found printed on your screen. We belong to God, eternal and infinite, creator of all things and all that is to come. We follow Christ, who comes to us from God and reveals God to us. He heals people and transforms lives and calls us to join in his ministry. He was crucified, died, and was raised again by God and reigns over all creation. And he bids us to die and rise with him in the service of the healing of the world. We live by the Spirit together with the communion of saints as members of the body of Christ, God's holy universal church. We are confident in the forgiveness of sin, the power of resurrection, and the reality of eternal life. In all things, it is our desire to follow Christ by the grace of the Holy Spirit for God's glory. Amen.
The New Testament lesson today comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. Hear now the word of the Lord. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from God whatever we ask, because we obey God's commandments and do what pleases God. And this is God's commandment, that we should believe in the name of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as God has commanded us. All who obey God's commandments abide in him, and God abides in them. And by this we know that God abides in us, by the spirit that God has given us. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. My ears perked up as I listened to Kristen Scott Thomas's story about her grandfather on my grandparents' war on PBS on Sunday night. Commander William Scott Thomas did not die in service to his country, but he laid down his life in ways that are remarkable. He commanded the HMS Impulsive during the D-Day invasion, during the British rescue efforts of British troops at Dunkirk, in the Russian Arctic convoys, and in placing allied mines in German minefields. It was reported that while guarding the Russian convoy on one of the occasions he led it, Commander Thomas spent two days and two nights on the bridge all alone. At the end of the storm, his crew had to lower his body into the ship because his entire body was encased with two inches of ice. He literally could not move. It is documented that during one of four incursions into the waters at Dunkirk, he ordered his crew to go below deck, hoping to spare them from the German forces attack. In his own report to the British Royal Navy, Commander Scott said that at the time the HMS Impulsive was under attack by six German planes and three German aircraft carriers. No, he did not die in service to his country, but he showed us that laying down one's life is not always about dying. It is sometimes about living. Our text today teaches us that Jesus defined love by laying down his life for us. And then our writer asks, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? He suggests that our witness to that love is about living in the way of Jesus every day, laying down one's life for one another and loving one another in truth and action. Ronald Cole Turner wrote, laying down our lives at its core can mean any number of ways in which we lay aside our claim to our own lives. We lay down our lives when we put others first. We lay down our lives when we live for the good of others. We lay down our lives 
when we make time for others. To love others is to lay down our life for them. When we lay down the completely normal human desire to live for ourselves, and when instead we allow the love of God to reorient us towards the needs of others, we are laying down our lives. I no doubt some of you are thinking, well, this is nothing new. And you're right. It's not anything new. Neither was it new information for the community of faith at the first century. Our writer was addressing a church in crisis. His community was very likely founded by the Apostle John, and the Gospel of John was the primary source for their community. But things were changing. The first apostles were dying. Peter, James, and Paul had all been executed by the hands of Rome. By 60, in the year of the 60 Christian era, the church was already under threat of attack for persecution almost all around the world. The temple in Jerusalem had fallen, and that literally shook the Jewish Christians to the core. By that time, there were multiple congregations scattered across the Middle East and on the bordering countries, some of Gentile origin, some of Jewish origin. But as the word of Christ spread, there were new theological claims were emerging, and some Christians were struggling with life in this new context. In other words, our epistle writer was doing what all preachers must do, interpreting the gospel in their context. The questions and the challenges are not so new, nor are the answers. Yet ever so often, especially in times of change or times of crisis, we need to hear them again. The largest question is how do we live as followers of Jesus Christ in times like these? Well, our current context suggests that we need to think about living like Jesus in the strange reality of a pandemic. Living like Jesus for most of us has meant not gathering when and where for worship when it was dangerous to our health or to our neighbor's health. Today it means loving your neighbor enough to wear a mask, even if you have been vaccinated. It means continuing to reach out to those persons who were affected in large ways by this pandemic, who perhaps lost their job or lost hours, therefore lost wages. It also means ensuring that all people are vaccinated and have access to the vaccine. That is why it is so important for our Sunday ministry team to be able to have DHEC here to offer COVID-19 shots today. Even more, it means thinking about how we can help our friends all around the world to have access to the vaccine. The church in Ecuador is not anticipating any vaccinations until fall of 2021. That is a telling truth about poverty in the world. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Surely we can advocate to ensure that the poorest people in the world receive 
a COVID-19 vaccine. How do we live as followers of Jesus Christ in a culture where so many people don't think so highly of religion? I think our writers suggest that we stay the course, that we continue to cling to the teachings of Jesus and to remember this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he has commanded us. In other words, keep the main thing, the main thing. For the Johannine community, the main thing was the love of God revealed in Jesus the Son. Love, love was at the core of all of it. Love was the motivation for the incarnation. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish but may have eternal life. Because Jesus loved. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He included women, even the woman at the well, as those he came to save. He didn't seek out the rich and the powerful and the knowledgeable, but he engaged the poor, the sinners and the outcast in his circle of friends. He did not judge people, yet he encouraged everyone to choose to live in the ways of holiness. He invited everyone, including the frightened, hiding Nicodemus, to be born from above, to be recreated in love. To all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. Love is at the core of the gospel message. And I th think our writer would teach us that today, even in these times, when people think so little of religion, love remains the main thing. It is love that will undergird our desire to live as followers of Jesus, even when we disagree among ourselves. The United Methodist Church has struggled for many years over a multitude of issues, one of which is the role of gay and lesbian members in the life of the denomination. Like our natural, national culture, our church culture has in some ways become more polarized than unified, more entrenched in one position or the other than in building relationships and love. Most of us think that we have the right or a right understanding. But early in the first century when Christians were debating the reality of the suffering of Jesus, whether he had real flesh, whether he died a real death, they were not sure about what to believe or what to think. Our writer instructed them, little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. There is a difference between saying the word love and living love. Our text teaches that truth is discovered when love becomes flesh in our lives, just as God's love became flesh in Jesus. Love is what grounds us in faith and in hope. The Apostle Paul knew the power of love. He wrote, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, 
And if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Without love, our best gifts, our greatest acts of compassion and justice and sacrifice mean nothing. Without love, being right does not matter. No, I'm not telling you anything new today. Rather, I am directing you to the very core of the gospel, love. Jesus said it best. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Let the people of God say amen and amen. Let us pray together. Strong covenant God, save us from being self-centered in our prayers and teach us to remember to pray for others. May we be so bound up in love with those for whom we pray that we may feel their needs as acutely as our own and intercede for them with sensitiveness, with understanding, and with imagination. This we ask in Christ's name. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift to us without price. Today we present Vivian James Hall for our holy baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If you do, please answer, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If you do, please answer, I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If you do, please answer, I do. I do. Will you nurture Vivian in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If you will, please answer, I will. I will. Let us pray together. As the body of Christ, O Lord, we pledge that we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this family with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? If you do, please say, I do. I do. I do. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I do. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, to make the disciples of all nations. Declare, Declare his, his works, works to the nations, nations his, his glory, glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sins and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that, that by dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All, All praise, praise to you, eternal, eternal Father, Father, through Jesus, Jesus, Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Vivian, would you come see me? Oh, how fun. Can you smile at Mr. Lynn? Thank you. Vivian James, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ will make you a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Amen. It is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Through baptism, we are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation. We are made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. And on behalf of the whole church, we commend this child, Vivian James Hall, to the care of this church, Washington Street United Methodist Church. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and in peace. Amen. The church would like for you all to have this candle that you can light every year on her on the anniversary of her baptism. Thank you. And that will just simply be a reminder of this beautiful day. And we have a certificate here as well. Thank you. And you were baptized here just like that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember? She probably doesn't remember, <laughs> but she will have an opportunity to remember her baptism and be thankful. Mm. Yes.
Wherever we are today, we are worshiping together. But soon, I hope that you will feel that you are ready to come back for in-person worship. So I greet you today from a pew, reminding you that this place, this sacred place, is here, and you are a part of the family of God. And now go in the name of the living, risen Christ to live as Christ taught you, to love one another as he has loved us. Amen and amen.